Okay, you're gonna help me out with this turbo tip. There's actually two again. I'm hot on my turbo tips. On fire. On fire. On fire. These came up. This is where I usually get my tips. These came up. We had a uh, a couple of us did a three day virtual retreat. Yeah, and nobody died. Nobody died. I I <laughs> still don't think my gut has been completely repaired because I laughed so hard at some of the shenanigans that went on. And to understand, I think there's open bottles of No, wine that's not point. why there was shenanigans. I'm just okay? saying it I'm just saying it was I'm there. Just gonna the throw evidence. A certain somebody off on the, the, the bus. evidence was there. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Brenda, who was at the retreat, goes running to the door to let somebody in mm -hmm. and she knocks the desk of one of the people who shall remain nameless, Diana. Um, knocks the desk and Di and I'm like, oh my God, Brenda, are you okay? Are you okay? Because she's yeah. like limping like this. And Diana goes, oh, my embroidery! <laughs> <laughs> I cannot make this up. I said, that's drilled in my brain forever. Diana says to me, save the embroidery and the babies. In that order. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, one of the things that we were talking about was how do I get a basting stitch around my embroidery design? Now, it's going to be a little different on the Dream Machine. I'm sure it's under a different menu. But I said to them, well, I don't remember all this stuff in my head. I look it up. How do you look it up? Can we have this camera on? It's on. No, I just need to put it on Oh, there screen. we go. Okay. How, so I'm like, I don't remember where all the buttons are, but I do remember where I can get help to find the button. Is that button there? Is that yes. where Yes. Now, this is on all your... All your high-end brothers have that little yes. help screen. Yes. So let's go find how I put a basting stitch on, Brent. Do you want it in the... Operation, Operation Guide. Operation Guide. You want embroidery, or are we talking embroidery? We're talking embroidery, basic operation. Yeah. Um, My machine's a little faster than this. Yeah. Eh, 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 eh. Basically, your manuals are all on your machines. So you go. And if you update your machines, oh, that's not what I want. Basic operation, maybe. Okay. okay, those are one? just pictures. I don't like those. Okay, so you're thinking of the, the, the Luminaire has, yeah. it all, has the PDF oh, file. Yeah, only the Luminaire has yeah. the PDF. Oh, one that's a have. disappointment. See, normally I have a Luminaire sitting here. Where? Yes. But I'm still waiting on a board. But so I can't see. even show them how to do this on this machine. Well, I'm just going to kind of show Well, then show go show them where it is. I was bragging about how yeah, you, put back up here, Eddie. you don't need to have the manuals beside you. For the Dream Machine, they did not put the PDF manual on okay, here. Okay, but it must be under something. Oh, not, not, no, it's not going to be nearly as um, comprehensive as the Luminaire. This is just going to give you, like, basic, like, say, for example, um, oh, I'm how do I put my, how do I put my... And that's why you should buy a Luminaire. Yes, but this has basic, what I like about this, this is me because I'm kind of, Yes, can you take it take it away, Sam? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you. This is what I like There's about this. There's some nice this. videos. Yeah, it could be because if you okay, go, what's nice? Selling guy. Yeah, there because the go. reason all it was right. doing that, and I can tell you why, is we're in sewing mode. What's cool about this? So you've got all these different things. So like, say I want to know what a bar tack is. Oh, I don't know what a bar tack is. Let me put bar tack. It tells you what to use it for. It's gonna show you up here what you need to do. Um, you need an A foot, and the stitch itself is 422, and you can just kind of scroll through your different pages and it shows you exactly step by step how to do it and then what's really nice when i hit return return okay notice my machine is now set up for bar tack oh that because is that's kind of cool enough. that's See, what i, I just looking that. at that's and that cool. and that's why it was telling me that they're not operational because we weren't in sewing mode and we're trying to get into these sewing yep. um, things okay. so that's so that's really helpful if you're just learning to sew or you're like what is that what does that do um and now the the pattern explanation is kind of cool, because say we're we're doing that guy right there. Uh, what, what's that stitch good for? I don't know. That's the reinforcing of heavy fabrics. 
Over so it, stitching. Okay. so this is this yep. is how I learn a lot of my sewing. So I'm like, what is this for? I just throw it in here and then go to and then and go there and then it tells yes. you. So oh, the dream machine cool. is really geared a lot towards the sewing side of it for these sort of things. Okay. Um, it's the luminaire. They realize that embroidery is the future. <laughs> so, well, the whole PD, the whole yeah. manual. Yeah, the whole PDF. Yeah, and so, it's searchable. Yeah. that's what I want so, to demo. So, so you now. definitely have more. Um, there's definitely more tech op, more help options built into the luminaire. The dream machine on the embroidery side is going to be a little light on information. Um, Can you? But you do have the basic operation guide. Okay. But you're not going to get super into in depth, like not you're not going to get the kind of in depth information that you're getting on your specific stitches that you can get for the sewing side on the dream machine. The Luminaire has the built in PDF um, so, manual, and it's searchable. And it's searchable. And what's nice about the PDF manual on the Luminaire is anytime you update your Luminaire, it mm -hmm. updates the PDF. Yeah. So that the manual on the machine matches the functions that are on the machine. Yeah. That's one of the... You don't, don't print them out. I see people all the time yep. printing them out and going to Staples with you. And I'm like, they're going to get outdated. Yeah, so and that's bother. one of the reasons, I mean, at first I thought they were just not putting manuals because they were cheaping out. But it was kind of foresight on their part because if they were giving you a manual with your machine and then, you know, three updates down the road, you're consulting with your manual, it's not right. That's why they didn't. That's why no luminaires come with a manual. The manual is built into the machine so that it's always up to date with um, whatever the latest update on the machine is. Yeah, I was really, I'm really impressed with. That's how I look up all almost everything. But can we go in embroidery and see if you can find the basting stitch button oh, yeah. on this I guy? I, I know right where the basting stitch. Um, there's at. two things that I wanted to let you know about the basting stitch. One is in your settings, it will. You will set how far your basting stitch should be away from. I'm talking about a basting stitch all, all around the whole design. Um, in settings, you will... Since we're talking about crazy cat people, we're going to do okay, cat. Okay, cat. That's good. Yeah. Well, basting stitch is basically a way to kind of anchor your fabric down to your stabilizer one more step. And in settings, you can tell it how far away from your design that basting stitch needs to be. And in, then in this... So in, in embroidery mode, you can apply the basting stitch. Yeah, so the basting stitch, um, like with Dream Machines, you have two edit screens. You have yeah. your first edit screen with embroidery in the bottom, the second edit screen with memory in the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> On the Luminaire, the second edit screen is called Layout, layout. which makes a lot more sense. And that's where the basting stitch yeah, is. Yeah, so if you hit Edit on the second edit screen, and we know it's the second one because we have memory down there, mm -hmm. you come in here, and that button right there. It doesn't, to me, that little icon, it looks like a flower. Yes. It To me, it, it doesn't look like it should be a basing stitch. But that's that, what it is. Yeah, because you'll notice if you... Now, if you go back to... You see how that... Uh, yeah, you can see on there how it's showing up. Yep. Okay, but if you go back now, return... Do you want me to leave no, the No, leave it on. Yeah, yep. Okay. And return. Okay, so somewhere in settings, they've determined how that spacing should be. Yep, settings is up here. Okay. And, in fact, it's I was, not on that page. It's not on this page, but, but it's, was, right, near that it's right page. here. There it goes. So, embroidery basting distance, right so there. So, somebody has set this machine to be almost a quarter of an inch. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I would have made it a quarter of an inch even. But anyway, good enough. Okay, so that's where the distance is set. Now, say, okay, Brent, and we're going to go back to the embroidery screen. Okay. Do, 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 do. Now, I want you to go into embroidery mode. And I want you to do plus or minus, the needle plus or minus. Oh, yeah, needle plus or minus, yep. And you'll see what the first step is. It automatically included the first step becomes the basting stitch. It actually adds that to your steps, which some people can find confusing because they are well, following the steps in the book, but they've added and like, a where basting did this, stitch. Where did this black, where did this number one black come from? Yeah, and that is indeed the basting stitch. We, can you go to um, the next color? Yep. And you'll start to see the cat. Now just hit that. Yep, right. Oh, e, e, uh, there you go. Now you see it's doing the kitty cat. Yep, like there's, there's the would. ears. Yep. But it actually puts that basting stitch on this file. So yep. if I were to save this file right now, I'm saving the basting stitch. However, this is interesting. It's kind of a long turbo tip, but I use the basting stitch, put it on my my pattern, and then I moved my kitty cat to a different location, mm -hmm. and the basting stitch does not move with the kitty cat. Um, 
So you want to make sure you put your basting stitch on after you have your kitty cat where I'm you want it. Pretty, when did you move it? In the layout or the edit screen? In layout. In layout, everything should move together. Well, maybe it was edit then. I don't know. Yeah, but you got to be careful. Yeah. What, and then that, I would recommend adding the basting stitch yes. after you have placed the design. What after you have moved, if you're going to move your design, put that basting stitch on after you say, yes, this is where I want my and design we'll, to we'll, be. We'll talk about this real quick. Because the, well, that's um, sort of one of our other things. But go you ahead. want me to not talk about it? No, go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Right. So it's like I said, again, again on the Dream Machine, you have two... You have edit one and edit, edit two. two. Edit <laughs> one is if you move it, and, and you'll have a move. You'll have move there. Yep. And if you go to embroidery, you'll notice you have move again. Uh, move again. The first move. And you're better off always choosing rotate. Yes, because rotate will let you do you both. You can do move and rotate at the same time. But in the first edit screen, when I move, I'm just moving individual components of the... So you'll notice how I'm moving the basing oh, stitch on there. maybe that's what I did. Maybe that's what I did. And then if I, if I go to there, I'm moving the cat. So that's in the first edit but screen. But they're both in the same... Oh, because you did it as an ad, you think? Because they're both in the same thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but that, but we're that's in the we're I in did. the edit mode. So that's okay. the first edit. If you go to the second edit, which is layout on a... On a... Um, luminaire, luminaire. There's something you're going to notice is you get move... Now, on the first edit, we had to select to select which of the components we wanted to move. We don't have that select button here because in the layout or the second edit, it moves everything as a unit. So if, you want to, if you're working on placement, trying to get something where you want it, but you want to move the entire pattern, mm -hmm. do the move in the second edit screen, not the first, or the ah, layout that's screen. That's probably what I did. Yeah, or the layout screen on a Luminaire or an Essence or whatever the newer, the newer models is. So. Or add the basting stitch after you know it's where you want yes. it to be, which is what I'm going to do for now. Yes. <laughs> so I don't that have works, to, that works so too. So I don't have to keep track of it. So that that um, so it was going to be looking stuff up. But now now we have to talk about the height of the presser foot. Oh, good. That's I, I, the other thing. That I was gonna, I wasn't sure if I was going to have to do that in my uh, in my uh, workbench or if we we're going to if you were going to get into it. We course. we need to talk about the height of the presser foot because Back. I continued to sputter about thread. Um, I moved over to a polyester thread, and uh, sewing aid was not my rescue person, and I. Uh, was getting ready to um to kill somebody yeah it wasn't a pleasant day i had a big project i was working on and it seems like every 10 stitches i was not happy camper and then you it would stop and i'd come over and troubleshoot and we'd yep. try something and it didn't quite work and it was pulling up it was yep. pulling up and making loops on top of my and the and then when I top of my machine. finally went over to look at it when it was actually running mm -hmm. i'm like oh yeah that's an easy fix this is what he says after I've fought for three weeks, but okay. And, I, and, and this, this is why we're talking about it, though, because yeah. it was an easy fix, and yes. I never even I hadn't, thought I, about it. It had slipped my mind. We ran into this once a few years back when somebody used my mom's machine and played with this setting. Um, if you'll notice here, there is a presser foot we're height in setting. settings, yes. And this is actually kind of high. It's very high. 7.5 millimeters is it. Now what that, the black is showing you what the default, default is. is. So that's how it comes set in. And you can actually go you can cut it in half. Now the reason hers was probably higher and likewise for me is I had done some quilting yes. with some batting. So I had raised my presser foot up to accommodate yeah, the because batting. Because what that adjustment is going to do as I pan over here is that's going to set how high the foot is off of your embroidery piece mm -hmm. and what's important there is if you're too high up what happens is the the piece jumps because the, the foot's not holding it down so you see the what they call flagging where the uh, where you're going to see in your hoop that the fabric is kind of going up and down and vibrating and that causes issues with the thread because of the mechanics of sewing the fact that the the, the, the fabric is staying on that needle a little too long it throws off um, your your hook formation it throws off the it throws off a lot of stuff yeah I had more puckers too. yeah you'll get more pucker and and you know that your presser foot is too high like I said if you leave it on default you'll be fine but the reason I noticed it right away is she's sewing and the, and it looks like it's vibrating it was just up and down up and down up and down and I'm like that's that's your problem 
So in the in long arming world, they call that flagging. I don't know if they call it the same in embroidery. I didn't even think of that. Um, but that is definitely um, that's something to be aware of because it wasn't pretty. Look at my fingers. Look how. They I, look should, good. I, should, I should be a finger model. They look good. Um, so we had adjusted the top tension thinking we needed yep. to pull the thread up harder. Yeah. Um, when in fact, what we needed to do was lower the presser foot. Yep, to keep and the fat. Chiefly, yep. after I lowered the presser foot, I had to put my top tension back. The, yep. Because I started to get bobbin thread. Well, one of the things on that um, if, so. you, if you study how the stitch is formed, the. Um, the physics of the needle going through the fabric actually helps throw the, the thread loop off the back. Okay. So if the needle can't withdraw from the fabric properly or it's, it's got too much give going in, mm -hmm. then it doesn't throw a loop properly. And so that's what you were running into. I mean, if you can get into yeah. the technical side I of it. I changed needles. I changed bobbins. I changed... But that's... Bobbin casings. Yep. Uh, and... And, and it's easy to see. And the answer was, lower thy pressive foot. And once I saw what was going on, I was like, yep, that's all you're running into. Because I could see it when I actually watched it run rather than show up after it broke. After it, but yeah. which, it really stinks because it's so easy. And so many of us do yep. the quilting too and then do not turn it back. The other thing that I came across was somebody was sputtering that uh, the design we were quilting on, they weren't trimming the stitches. She goes, oh, at least they could do is trim the stitches. And I said, well, that's a setting in your machine. Uh, you can go in and turn that on and off. And the question was, where? So maybe you can show people where that is because we ran across. You were just there. Yeah, right. So we, Can we have this camera in? Good. We ran across this again. Yeah, and so this, uh, it's just a friendly reminder. See the little scissors? That's And so you can actually change the, you can change the tension for the embroidery, that specific pattern pattern right here mm -hmm. under tension mm -hmm. but that's end color trim and jump stitch trim in Correct. some cases you may want to turn them off when, but in, when we are when we are quilting yeah in the hoop if you want I to, point, yeah. to turn them off yeah um and that, that was what happened it was turned off and we went into embroidery mode and had stitches and going. that is one of the big differences between an nq 1400 versus the nq 1600 is jump stitch is not on a 1400 and if oh. you don't have jump stitch and you know what jump stitch is you will not like not having it yeah you won't live without it once you have but, it that comes up and it trims all the little, yeah. little threads for you so you don't have a mess afterwards but okay is that, cool beans. Is that for turbo tips yeah i'm sorry it was oh, a, right. there was a lot of little whoopsie doodles i ran